Hey, people, you're back with Bunky. Delete your DLC because I've got the original Croken Sentinel for you now. I'm going to show you a whole new way to hammer the enemy. I hope you're psyched because Bowser here is going to go all tropical frog for the gameplay to coordinate with my funky new banner. But right now, let's try to focus on the build because I'm going to go a bit old school for you here and give you all your weapon and equipment choices in, the th in this first section of the video because, frankly, I don't have enough time to talk about it all in the gameplay. There's a lot of info coming your way, guys. Uh, this build's going to be rolling out a lot of power and and weapon damage. That's what's so great about it. So for tech armor, get durability at rank 4 and then get the power damage. Okay, guys? Leave that final rank free so you can get three ranks of rage. Okay, guys? Just those first three ranks. That's going to score you 1,012 health and 1,350 shields. Not to be snubbed at when you've got a 40% damage reduction. Okay, guys? Now, as for your powers, Incinerate's going to be uh, a big part of your boss strategy. Okay, guys? We're going to do a lot of damage with this. Make sure you spec it this way. Get damage, burning damage, and most importantly, armor damage. I'll explain in the gameplay why Incinerate has suddenly become so vital. Okay, guys, you can do a lot of damage with this power. But for the main part, it's all going to be about the lift grenades. These things are going to be flying out all over the place, and so are the enemy. Okay, guys, there's only one way to build it. Go with damage. Max grenades and damage and radius. Okay, guys, that's going to get you good to go. Um... Of course, you need your Krogan Berserker though, okay guys? It's power and weapon damage, so get weapon damage, power damage, and weapon damage, okay guys? That's the build. Right then, for your weapons, okay? The main weapon is going to be the Venom Shotgun. Okay guys, this is going to be our main bad boy here. Slap on the uh, spare thermal clip and the high caliber barrel, okay guys? Because you will go through the clip rather quickly and you're not going to pierce with this gun, so just make sure you get the damage on it, okay? That's the only mod you're going to need for this. Um, your main gun is essentially something that's going to stagger the enemy, hopefully to a, a good air of effect. You can go with something like the Geth Plasma Shotgun, the Growl Spike Thrower. Uh, even with your assault rifles, I've got some good choices. You can go with the Falcon, the Aedas Anti-Synthetic Rifle, the Striker Assault Rifle at a push, okay guys? You'll probably want to just be reload cancelling with your lift grenades if you're going to go out with something like that okay guys because to get the most out of that clip you really want it to ramp up all right guys and you can only do that if you hold down that trigger you can't break up that clip uh with your powers all right guys you even got a sniper option you can go with the christ a sniper rifle we've uh, I've given you a nice big gun run video on that so if you've got any questions just watch that video and you've got some pistol options as well okay you've got some bloody good pistol options go with something like the scorpion uh the acolyte um and the talon Okay, guys. I mean, I mean, you can rock a power magnifier on a pistol as well, guys, and amp up your power damage again. Uh, the something like the acolyte is going to completely strip off those uh, shields, so your lift grenade is going to be at full potential there. And something like the talon, it's got 150% uh, damage multiplier to shields and bows, so pistol options are great for your main stagger weapon. Okay, guys. But then your other weapon is going to be your boss killer. I'm going to be using the Cerberus Harrier, okay, because it's a gun to be feared. Uh, what I recommend for this gun is that you get the magazine upgrade and the extended barrel on it, okay, guys? Because then you're just hitting hard and you're hitting plenty, okay? That's the best thing you can do with a Cerberus Harrier. Um... Other assault rifle choices for your boss killer, though, is going to be the particle rifle. A big part of this build is going to be using elemental ammo, and that thing stacks ammo amazingly well, okay, guys? Um, anything like the particle rifle is going to do that, something with a high DPS. I mean, uh, not something like the Typhoon so much, okay? That's not going to be so hot. I mean, a significant component of the Typhoon's DPS comes from the fact that it's got those damage modifiers against absolutely all defenses, okay, guys? Um... And as I explained in my last video, okay, guys, that um, that doesn't affect your ammo damage, okay, guys? So it's really not going to uh, buff up what you're going to be doing with your elemental ammo. So probably nothing like the uh, Typhoon, but the Particle Rifle, absolutely yes. Otherwise, it is just your, your usual suspects, guys. Go with something like the Hurricane, okay? Again, good for the Power Magnifier. You can just absolutely drill down your enemies with that. The Collector Sniper Rifle is an amazing gun for applying ammo as well, okay, guys? It's just like the Particle Rifle. And um, even just a hard hitter like the Black Widow okay snipers hit hard okay and the weight's really not going to matter so much for this build at all okay guys as i will explain and of course shotguns are amazing for damage in this game as well you can go with something like the piranha or the raider and of course <laughs> the riga carbine okay guys i mean the rate of fire on that gun is extreme nothing stacks ammo rounds quite like it they really don't i mean the riga does have a 0.5 multifier to uh, against armor which is what this you know, boss killer is all about but as i just stated 
did earlier, okay, guys? That only applies to weapon damage and not your ammo damage, okay? That's another reason why incendiary rounds in a Riga really should probably be illegal, okay, guys? Absolutely. But, um, you know... If you haven't got your hands on any of those bad boys, okay, you can still do just fine with something like um, the Lancer, the Matok, the Revenant, um, Claymore, Wraith, Crusader. In fact, the Geth Plasma Shotgun is going to be great, okay, guys, that hits really hard. And even the Growl Spike Thrower uh, can be your boss killer, too. Um, you've got the Widow, the Indra, the Valiant, the Keyshock Harpoon Gun, okay, guys, that was all a very recent video. You can check that out, okay, guys, and for your... Um, you can also go with the Blood Pack Punisher and your Tempest for a different SMG choice, you guys. And even some of your pistols, again, okay, guys, are also good because you can stick the power magnifier on again, okay, guys. And it's just like having a little pocket sniper, okay, something like the Executioner, the Talon, or the Paladin, okay, guys. All good stuff there, but that's your weapon choices. No, I didn't flick through all the weapon, weapon categories here to show you an image. I'm sure you can find your way around, okay, guys? I have faith in you. Let's jump into the equipment, okay? Uh, for your ammo bonus, I'm going to highly recommend you stick on the incendiary rounds and get your high ones on as well, okay, guys? Go with uh, incendiary rounds three and four if you got them, okay? This is absolutely your best choice for this build, okay, guys? For... um. Reasons I'm going to explain throughout the video, okay, guys. This, these, these rounds are really going to just tie up the whole package, okay, guys. They're going to be amazing. But you can still get out some nice little tech explosions on all your sort of trash mobs and stuff by going with something like Disruptor or Cry, okay, guys. They'll still work fine for you. For your armor bonus, okay, guys, as I just stated, okay, guys, you've got some decent durability going on here. You can be absolutely fine without your cyclonic modulators. Um, obviously, you can take one if you do need to endure more, if you are struggling to survive with this build, okay, guys. But ultimately, I highly recommend you get on your power amplifiers, okay, guys. Hit hard with your powers, all right, guys. Otherwise, if you're still looking for more survivability, go with something like your adrenaline modules so you can get around quicker. Or your shield power cells so you can duck out if it gets a bit, um, you know, edgy out there guys and get your shields recharging and you could even go with something like the stabilization module okay guys if you have got confidence in your play style okay guys this will help you work some of those guns that i mentioned they've got a lot of kick okay guys you are pretty durable with any crow gun okay <laughs> with just three ranks now, for your gear bonus, the grenade, the lift grenades are going to be flying all over the place, guys, so I highly recommend you've got plenty of them at your disposal. Get on your grenade capacities, okay, guys? If you haven't got grenade capacity, try and get something like the shock trooper upgrade on or the warfighter package or stretch the assault load out, okay, guys, so you've got those extra thermal clip packs. Um, however, you know, because there is only one way to build the lift grenades, you do have that max grenades option here. So two up on most uh, grenade powers, okay, guys? You do start with four grenades as a standard. So, essentially, you could um, do all right if you just sort of went out and just did more damage with the grenades you got. Okay, guys, go with something like the Adaptive War Ramp, the Mental Focuser. Uh, the Commando Package would be fine if you've gone with a pistol option somewhere in your playstyle. Okay, guys, otherwise you can just get sort of a, a weapon amps for weapon damage. Okay, guys, and... If you haven't got anything like that, then, of course, you can use shield options as well, guys. Go with Stronghold Package, Shield Booster, Survivor Loadout, or even the Multi-Capacitor. All right, guys? But, um, yeah, after that, you just stick on the obvious weapon bonus. Your weapon bonus should be uh, for your main gun. For me, it's going to be the Venom, so I want a shotgun rail lamp on. That's it from this lengthy build section. Let's jump into the gameplay for a uh, shitload more of information, okay, guys? All right, guys, this is the dream. Just fucking check out that banner of mine. It's trippy, right? Apparently, a recent patch to the game has messed up all the alternative and weekend challenge banners really bad. However, after nearly 12 months in the making, I'm finally taking a Krogan Sentinel out with the Venom shotgun. It may not be exactly how I envisioned it, but who needs a massive hammer when you're going to be stunlocking the crap out of everything anyway? Just call me Karma, because it's always satisfying to do that to the Geth. Another reason for the delay, besides where it took me to get this fucking gun anyway, um, was that I had to recapture this video based on uh, some new info I received that changed the build. Although it's a constant struggle for me to actually get what I want or need from the game store, updating the build without promoting the entire class wasn't actually the issue this time. As I stated before, I'm trying to get all you guys involved in these additions to the Know Your Meme playlist. I just want to thank you all for your support, it's really great. It's what makes doing these videos worth um, worthwhile. Sorry. However, in promising spots to all these different 
different people. Um, it's just difficult to get it all together. So that's why this uh, video is a week late. So um, I also want to apologize and give a shout out to MadMe77, uh, who was able to join me for the original recording of this video, but uh, couldn't make it back for the reshoot. MadMe, or as explicit officially dubbed the guy Madam77, because <laughs> on first glance he filled that space with the missing A. And that's hilarious as far as I'm concerned. So Madam77 was, um, he first joined me for the 360 subs day that I did, and then he was meant to be part of this video. Uh, Madam was actually one of the guys me and um, Explicit took around an all Volus Platinum game on the subs day, actually. It was um, because of him that we did it. Because <laughs> he told us that he and his friends all tried it as soon as they all got Volus, and uh, it didn't work out for them. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, That's certainly one way to throw yourself into the deep end, guys. It really is. Because what you need to understand is that he and his friends hadn't even tried gold at that point. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we did it with them uh, to show them that it can be done, and to also not let them have anyone tell them that there's something you cannot do in this game. Okay guys, it's all viable, just not necessarily clever. Um, now though, my buddy Technokiller makes a shocking return to the game. Thought I'd lost him for good to Halo 4 and Minecraft. I'd followed, honestly, but there's just no way in hell and giving Bungie any more of my money. <laughs> and I, I, I literally, I'd be happy to slap in my copy of Halo 3, but no one wants, seems to want to join me there. To this day, my mythic maps go unplayed, which is partly why Bungie can go fuck themselves as far as I'm concerned. Still, you might remember Techno from my second video guide ever, where he played with his clearly pink Krogan Sentinel. I've also got two new guys from my subs list joining me again. Um, Novocaine88 still with me, filling in for MadMe77, and then there's also SkateKid20. Both of these guys are fairly new to the game as well. They're always unlocking something around me. Not unlike my other sub, Frozen Massimune, uh, who you all may remember unlocked the Venom in front of me on the first time we played together. Which was annoying because I didn't even have it back then. <laughs> And what's unfortunate, though, is that we are going to lose Skate Kid. Uh, he's going to have to take off for some reason partway through this game, and we're not going to get full extraction as a result. But in the meantime, he's going to be in N7 Shadow, so these Geth bastards don't see him coming, while Nova's going to meet them head-on with the Crow Guard, and Techno's propping up the jug. I, of course, am here with the beastly Krogan Sentinel. Now, I call him Beastly, even though it's taken me this long to play him, because he is, and always has been. My only issue, up until recently, is that he and the soldier are practically the same character, in terms of how you can effectively operate with them. Fortunately, you can effectively operate with these characters in a variety of ways, allowing you to sort of play one one way and one another. Unfortunately, with that, though, no matter how you delegate things, he's always the weaker of the two, whether you like it or not. Now, <laughs> Krogan Sentinel fans, assemble. I can already hear the thunder and the roars. But, you know, how about instead of just resorting to spit and shit and bile at me now, you just shut up and hear me out for a moment and we can discuss this like civilised folk. You know, where all our points and opinions can be actually made valid. In fact, here's a, a point to bring up to you guys. I'm going to have a little trouble picking up Skate now when he goes down because um, the Venom Shotgun can occasionally go into auto-charge mode and the game will then be convinced that you're holding down the right trigger even when you're not, preventing you from doing any of the A button activities here. The only way to fix it is to just switch the gun out and switch it back to it, okay? It, it, it happens now and again. It's the only fault of the gun, though, really. It's solid otherwise. <laughs> but no, as I was saying, um, see, Krogan's as I've said many times before, are great weapons platforms and melee characters because they can dish out as much as they take. Their incredible health, durability and stagger resistance allows them to endure many lengthy firefights so that they can just put out as much damage themselves, essentially. And, you know, with these two Krogans as well, they're really powerful, okay? Their special attacks hit hard and cover a lot of ground. In good Krogan sense, their power, the powers they make use of will have the ground-shaking response, okay? They're not just a utility. As a result, you've actually got three really effective ways to play them. If you treat Incinerate as your primer for the Sentinel and Lift Grenade as your detonator, you can essentially lay down the same points I did for my Krogan soldier in, for this character right here and go to work the same way. See, my, um, my Krogan soldier, as some of you may be aware of, is a melee build. And whereas you can throw down the exact same points for a melee build of the Sentinel, I'd actually recommend doing things just a little differently here, based on what I learned recently. Tech armor is standard, as you might expect. Rather than five ranks of fortification, I would go five ranks of tech armor, getting durability and melee damage, because, you know, it's right there for us, guys. And um, then you've got your powers uh, that are really... No, well, your power, sorry, that's really helpful in stunning the enemy first. You can line up that Krogan charge and connect with it every time. On the soldier, it's carnage, but on this guy, use incinerate. You always want to spec for damage, burning damage, and armor damage on this guy. In fact, that final evolution is a big part of your boss strategy, but... 
everyone else is going to really get hit hard by the first two evolutions. They're just going to work for you, okay? You can... Because what you need to understand is you can only slap one enemy at a time. Um, whether it's at the back of your hand or a respectable bow. Okay, guys? Uh, so it, it really does um, benefit you to just get the best single target damage with the incinerate strike. Just to make sure that they go down. Okay? And for area of effect damage, you've got grenades on both kits. And it is good to have this for, uh, for when the situation gets crowded. Okay? Because, like I said, you can only melee a single target at a time. And Krogans don't have much maneuverability. They're not able to perform any evasive a roll or in any direction, so you really don't want to get yourself surrounded or swarmed at all. No one's going to be pulling off an Erdnock grunt in the multiplayer, all right? Okay, so um, what the soldier can do is he can slap down an inferno grenade and follow up with carnage for a fire explosion, whereas the sentinel he can light up an enemy with incinerate again and follow up with lift grenade. Now, the lift grenade itself is great area of effect damage, it's got enough force behind it to stagger up most things. But if you've got a flaming target that you've hit with incinerate as well, it'll explode too for even more damage if it, if it has no protection that is. Now this makes lift grenades great in a pinch and of course for extra damage but uh, they're not the most ideal stopping force for a big boss target. Because of this I don't actually recommend you fully spec them out like you would the Inferno Grenades on the Soldier. Instead just get Rank 4's damage on it so Incinerate can be more of the force you need. With those point spares, you can get weapon damage and power damage in your passives to make good on the power damage you missed out in tech armor because obviously the melee damage was there. Um, these bonuses will obviously screw some weapon damage as well, which is generally helpful against bosses because they can often be too dangerous to melee orc and they can just cut off your attack. And also, as an added bonus to the initial three ranks, you'll score a nice bit of um, extra capacity. And your capacity bonus makes your weapons lighter, which is great because you'll really want to get that heavy shotgun any Omni Blade on, okay? And also because fortification and tech armor are going to slow your power usage down by 50%. Um, Still now, with some points in your passes, though, uh, you will able, be able to uh, cast your stun move quite frequently, as you need to as well. So that's just all going to work out for you. Finally, then, there's your, your meat of this dish, okay, which is your rage tree. Just uh, get durability, martial artist, and pure rage, okay. So then you're really tanky enough to just go right up in the enemy's face and do the damage. That's just using your head, guys, okay. Um, You'll find that the, the dish really complements itself because you, you can effectively get melee kills, which will only make your next melee attack stronger, so you can get more melee kills faster, and then you'll slip into rage mode and become tankier and stronger again, okay? Uh, one heavy melee kill gets you a 75% bonus, and two melee kills land you an additional 50% melee damage and 25% damage reduction, so you're good to go from there, okay, guys? Either way, um, you've basically got two almost mechanically identical and perfectly viable melee builds right there with the two... Uh, Krogans. However, out of the two, the soldier gets the edge. It's not an edge I actually take, but I have it when I play the soldier, okay? See, the Sentinel may have a permanent 40% melee damage bonus on, as long as he has tech armor active. But with the quick deactivation and reactivation of the soldier's fortification, I can have a 70% melee damage bonus. Plus, there's a permanent 30% power damage bonus for both my offensive powers, which are effective against armor both separately and even more so combined. And, and this is because you simply don't need that recharge speed at rank 5. So, you know, if you're keeping score, that's one point to the soldier, right there. Now, you may be thinking, well, the Sentinel has superior crowd control because of the actual stopping power within lift grenades. And that is important on a Krogan. But... <laughs> What I'm going to tell you is the best way to control a crowd in this game is to actually kill a crowd of enemies, alright? Something you'll see one Krogan do more efficiently than the other with a power build of the two. Now, power builds don't need to get stuck in as much. They've obviously got better range of their powers than melee attacks, okay? Or at least most melee attacks. And, you know, there's also a much greater area of effect. This heavily reduces any return fire because you, so many more enemies are going to be getting knocked back with your attack. This means your Krogan can chill out a lot more and you can get a, afford to have a lot less points in rage. So, spec tech armor and fortification for durability and power damage that time. And then you definitely want to be fully specking out your two offensive powers as well, okay? When you combine their effects at rank 6 for a power combo, you'll produce the strongest possible combo then. So, no more four ranks of lift grenades now. Max it out like you always should. Damage, max grenades, and damage and radius. That really is the only way you should build them, okay? And for reference, inferno grenades ought to be spec for damage, damage, and armor damage. As for the next power, which was your stun move on the melee build, I'd recommend you keep Carnage the same on the soldier and stick with um, damage, recharge speed, and armor damage. This is because the soldier's stun move is also his detonator, as um, Inferno Grenades can't only prime tech explosions since the damage they do is indirect. 
On the Sentinel, however, both of your moves can technically prime and detonate combos, <laughs> although, to be honest, you're only actually going to see Incinerate do that for you. If by some freak accident you do manage to set up a biotic explosion, your tech power unfortunately isn't going to be able to detonate it. So, you know, by the process of elimination, your stun move becomes your primer on the Sentinel, and because of that, I would actually recommend Radius instead as your first evolution. See, with Radius on uh, Incinerate, you can affect two enemies with it, which is smart when you've got a detonating power that's got a big radius that hits multiple targets. That way, the odds are just much better that you'll successfully prime and detonate a combo every time and really churn out a lot of damage. It's what makes such kits as the Quarry Male Engineer and Fortress Sentinel so damn effective. Um... You also want to be doing that since, for the most part, your target must meet a very specific set of requirements to produce a fire or cryo explosion, and that's at the best of times, guys. Most powers, regardless of how many primed enemies they actually hit, will only detonate one combo per cast. It is only the powers that launch multiple projectiles or hits that set off multiple explosions, such as cluster grenade shrapnel or even shockwaves wubs. So despite Liftgrade's mighty 6.5 meter explosive radius that hits through solid objects with absolutely no target cap, there is only one enemy it can actually detonate, and it's a particularly finicky one, okay? This target must be an enemy that can actually be lifted. Therefore, it cannot have any form of resistance still on it. And not being able to detonate a protected target with us we've got shields and barriers on is pretty standard for a fire or cryo explosion, but not being able to detonate an armoured target is a killer, okay? It really is. i got to really stress this point to you all, because you'll be surprised just how many people don't realise this about lift grenades. Hell, I didn't when I started doing these video guides, but it is a bit of a game changer. For that same reason, you might just want to opt out of lift grenades entirely for the melee build and just get the extra durability and tech arm and the extra weapon damage in your passage tree so you're stronger in everything else you do. Honestly though, the lift grenades are not an issue until you're bo battling bosses. Okay, They only exist on characters that can make them incredibly strong. Your Krogan Sentinel has the tech armor bonus and your Sari Vanguard has the biotic charge one. So basically your shielded and barrier enemies generally get rinsed by them anyway. In fact, especially your barriered, okay, because <laughs> um, lift grenades get a 50% boost to damage against that resistance. However, the big armor targets are tough sons of bitches, and it pays to get a good power combo on them once in a while, specifically something like a fire explosion which does double damage against armor. Unfortunately, with lift grenades, you simply can't do that, though. Um, in fact, the only thing you're lifting is something that has absolutely no chance of surviving the kind of damage these things do. That's why you're not going to prime a biotic explosion, and why you have absolutely no reason to spec for any of the lifting features of the power. But let's wrap up these power builds now. The only thing that's left to get to get at this point are damage in capacity and power damage in your passes, obviously. And then you've got enough points for durability at rank 4 and rage as well. Despite everything I've just said, you can still go to town with a nice light weapon that you can preferably strap a power magnifier to. Between incendiary rounds and fire powers, you're still likely to see fire explosions going off all over the place. Just lob an inferno grenade and cast carnage or even incinerate the enemy and hit them with a lift grenade. With an SMG or a pistol like the Talon, with, which has got a damage multiplier to shoot, shields and barriers, you'll get round the whole ragdoll requirement often enough. Of course, with such a requirement, the soldier runs away with this build too, okay? It doesn't matter that it's not instantaneous, the inferno grenades do more damage than lift grenades in the end, and carnage has no issue in lighting up an armoured target. As a result, the sentinel is always going to take much longer to kill any boss enemy, and therefore he just cannot keep up with the damage the Krogan soldier can do this way, so you know, that's 2 nothing soldier. But, you know, it's about time I stop knocking this kit if I ever hope to convince you that this build I have here is good, okay? Because what the Sentinel does do better than the Soldier is fucking tank. At the very most, the Soldier can score a 40% damage reduction with fortification, whereas the Sentinel can get um, that with the first evolution of durability, okay? Fully specced out, Tech Armor can grant you a 50% damage reduction, and Rage can net you 1,850 shields on top of 1,388 health. With all income and damage literally halved like that, you're practically doubling that incredible health. This only makes him the best weapons platform of the two, because nothing gets weapon damage done like pouring out the lead, or the lasers, or using tactical cloak. But besides being a member of the most broken class in the game, if you can just stand your ground for longer and endure, you can easily put a magazine out there and poke more holes in a horde of enemies than you can the game's ending, okay? Now, don't forget everything I've just said about your powers already, okay? They're still available to do a ton of damage for you. The point I'm making is the Krogan is durable. That's why you only need ranks 4's durability in tech armor and raids to brave whatever the game has installed for you. 
Incinerate offers up a nice stun and gun option for any trooper sized enemy and can be extremely useful in a boss battle. Just make sure you spec it for damage, burning damage and armor damage again so you can squeeze all the potential out of it. Your lift grenades as well, they still pack a punch as always. Uh, you'll quickly sort out a trash mob with just one or two of those, okay? And you can still combine it with Incinerate on the right target for a fire explosion and more air of effect damage. Just get it all working with weapon damage, power damage and weapon damage in your passes, okay? The only thing that might stop you rolling out with something like that might be a reality check. This game has been out for quite some time now, and the fact is there isn't just two Krogan anymore. Unfortunately for the Sentinel, there is the Krogan Adept, okay? That son of a bitch has the same base health as the Krogan Vanguard, the baddest motherfucker in the game. So he's just as, if not slightly more, tankier than the Sentinel, and a better weapons platform, okay? With his warp shockwave combo, you don't just have a stunning gun option for every enemy in the game, but also a foolproof power combo that is as big and powerful as Sin, capable of obliterating huge crowds of enemies and boss targets alike. That's not even to mention the debuff effect of the warp attack, which is not just great for, which is not just a great boost to any weapon damage, but a fucking incredible one when when you've got warp rounds plugged in. So you know that's a surprise victory to the croak and the dead there. Um, as a result, I've come up with this, okay? This is a loadout which is a variant of the basic weapons build, with a little extra power damage thrown in for good measure. At the expense of some extra health, I'm able to incorporate a much greater power focus for some incredible crowd control and damage. Something you can't get with, you know, you can't just get this without a grenade power that's got some force behind it. With the lift grenades, I don't have to worry about a recharge speed, so I can still roll out like a weapons platform and be a one-man gangbang, okay? All amped up with the tech powers, uh, sorry, the tech armor's power damage ever. Evolution. These things are set to blow away anything within a 6.5 meter radius. Obviously, still acknowledging the issues with the lift grenades that I mentioned earlier, I have paired them up with the Venom shotgun for an explosive combo. If you haven't yet, you're about to see me completely decimate large groups of enemies in moments. With a charge shot, the Venom shotgun itself does a good bit of damage over a tiny bit of ground with those weapon bonuses behind it. The shot on its own is a, is powerful, uh, is a powerful enough explo- No, sorry, it's a powerful explosive round that staggers all trooper-sized enemies on combat. Contact. But what's great then is it'll spin to lots of little mini bomblets that explode to damage and stagger again to a greater area of effect. This effectively locks up groups of enemies and makes short work of their shields, since projectile weapons like this one traditionally outright ignore shield gate. This has any elemental ammo you have plugged um, applied to the targets with some reliability. Um, the charge up will also increase the ammo damage by 10% as well. After that, you've just got groups of enemies bouncing and panicking all over the place. That one lift grenade is just going to send sky high, and then it's just GEF IN SPACE! Okay, guys? This bombastic treat is why you can afford to be less tanky, okay? There's just no opportunity for return fire when the enemy is on the bomb site, okay? The venom shotgun and the lift grenades just work so well together. Those mini bomblets will quickly uh, cover a large surface area akin to your lift grenades, um, and popping those shots around the enemy's feet to make them dance is just going to make it impossible for them to escape. Uh, you know, it's like in a moment you've branded the idiot masses and herded the, st the stupid bastards to the slaughter. You've basically got all the conditions met for the lift grenades in that first strike, so that one last big hit blows them up in more ways than one for massive air of effect damage. And if you're thinking, if I was tankier, I could afford to get in closer and, and score that shotgun bonus damage, then you really haven't been paying attention. <laughs> okay, guys, as I said before, I've done a ton of research in response to the comments I received on the Bunkies Builds videos, and there was a lot of little game changes. As a result, a lot of my older videos have annotations throughout, okay? If you sit through the Krogan Soldier Guide again, for instance, you can read all the details on the most up-to-date versions of those builds that I've mentioned in this video. And something else you might also read is that there is no actual shotgun damage bonus in this game, outside of the AIU's tactical cloak, of course. I made the mistake of telling you there was before, because I was told there was, by friends a long time ago. However, the simple fact is, you do more damage with a shotgun up close, because the pellets, which come out in a cone-like shape from your weapon, don't get to travel and therefore spread as far. It's just a simple matter of more than hitting for maximum damage. There is absolutely no damage drop-off or variations with range with Math, with Math Effect 3's weapons, okay? Uh, that's something that develops apparently dropped after the second game. So if a pellet hits in the confines of Glacier or across the map on Rio, the damage is the same, okay? So as the Venom doesn't shoot pellets at all, you don't have anything to worry about except lag. All right, guys? No, uh, what you ought to actually be worried about is how you're going to deal with boss enemies. As I think I've explained now, there's no chance of a power combo with your moveset alone, and the attack strategy I just went through with you is unable to lay down enough focused fire to efficiently deal with those types of heavily durable enemies. The Venom and the Lift Grains are generally best suited for air of effect damage. 
However, we still are a weapons platform. Don't be afraid to bring along another gun that is a, uh, going to be able to bring down those enemies. Plug any weapon with a good DPS with incendiary rounds and then combine it with this build of incinerate and you're laughing. Just smile and say cheese, okay? I know hoarding two big heavy hitters like this is not going to see incinerate fly out too often, but the thing is, you really don't need it to, okay? This new strategy for this build um, that I re-recorded the video for, because um, originally I left Incinerate off the build entirely and tanked with it, um, and with, no abs with absolutely no power recharge to worry about, I could slap on a monstrous gun and just hold my ground with it. However, my subscriber Dragain uh, came to me once more and continued to be the fantastic source of information that he is. And what he pointed out was the latest discovery of the Incendiary bitch, and uh, the fact that Incinerate does in fact stack with Incendiary rounds. This makes a lot of sense, honestly, guys, because as Incinerate stuff has always ticked out in the same fashion as the Incendiary rounds, which was always the criteria for the Incendiary glitch. So on contact, Incinerate only does 75% of its listed damage, whereas the remaining 25 is dealt out in six equal doses for the next three seconds. This is separate from the burning damage evolution stop, though, okay, but um, at least that provides an additional 50% of the power's overall damage, which is nice. <laughs> So as it currently stands, folks, you can have Warp, Inferno Grenades, Flamer, the Paladin's Fire Shield, I believe, other Incendiary Rounds, of course, and even Incinerate. All stack with Incendiary Rounds dot to combine and multiply the damage they do over time and dish it all out in about three seconds, okay, guys? What that means for this build is that by stacking Incinerate on top of your Incendiary Rounds, you'll score a lot of additional bonus damage against the bosses. See, Incinerate is able to damage shields and barriers at half strength, and once absorbed by Incendiary Rounds, they'll both do it together. For me here, this is the difference between 104 additional damage per clip and 1,220, okay? However, once we get the shields off and get down to the armor, Incinerate is able to uh, multiply its damage by 150% because of that armor damage evolution. That multiplier then transfers over to the Incendiary Rounds dot two, and with a single clip of my Harrier 8, I can set nearly 4,000 additional damage in motion against that enemy, okay? Now that's just with one clip and one cast of Incinerate. If I repeat either, the damage will continue to build up at that same pace. Okay, with these kind of bonuses, it doesn't matter that you don't have any equipment on that boosts your boss killer. Those enemies are set to crumble before you, they really are. And since Incendiary Rounds are this build source for the best tech explosions they can roll out on trash mobs, you'd be mad to ignore this opportunity. As I said, just make sure your boss killer is one of the usual suspects, okay guys? Any gun with a high DPS is going to be amazing for you. I like to bring up the Cerberus Harrier. All round, it's arguably the best gun in the game, okay? I can keep a safe distance with it while doing, still doing a lot of damage, okay guys? And that small clip had some much needed incentive to hit those ammo boxes for everything I need to rock this build. Just don't let the ultra rare collection scare you off, okay? God knows I can relate. There's plenty of other guns you can put to the same effect that I listed in the build section of this video, alright? But anyway, there's your nice niche for the Krogan Sentinel in this ever changing world. I hope you'll show him some love like I finally have and then send some of that love my way, okay? Please comment, rate, and subscribe. I've been Bunky, and Krogan's are beautiful.